So, what is the method and strategy we use? Uh, we know now read field refinement will help if we have a starting model, but how do we get the starting model? One is to do in any case we have to do the pattern decomposition and there are two mainly available methods one is due to poly and the other due to label and these two methods are there already in the, in the program extra which we used. The structure solution of course, we can develop a model either from direct methods or from Patterson methods and that can be now taken to structure completion by the difference Fourier technique and then we follow it put the structure in and do the read field refinement where we refine the profile first take the profile to the final possible uh, refined values of R P and R W P and then introduce the structural parameters put X Y Z etcetera and then do the structure refinement. It is not the, a straightforward procedure like in a single crystal where you just press a button and the least squares refinement gets done using all the parameters. Here we have a certain specific way in which we have to release the parameters because we are dealing with very subtle things. Remember the overlap in the powder pattern and the 1D profile. Uh, so, we have to be very cautious when we do the read field refinement. So, initially we release the, uh, we first do the scale factor refinement and then we release the x, y, z. So, there is an excellent book. In fact, I should give the reference to the book here. Uh, this is the powder method uh, where we describe the read field refinement, etc. What is the, the edited by R. A. Young. So, R. A. Young edited this, this book called powder methods. methods. And uh, this particular book is a uh, UCR text and available through Oxford University Press. So, one can buy this book or read the book and this will now cover all these full approach which, because it is out of scope of this particular course. I just thought I will mention uh, the possibility of determining the structure uh, other than uh, these methods which is the traditional approach and that is referred to as the direct space approach. So, here we are directly uh, trying to get a trial structure. So, the trial structures are generated independent of the powder pattern. So, we do not worry about the powder pattern. We can use uh, techniques like Monte Carlo simulations, simulated annealing, grid search and of more, more recent origin is the uh, genetic algorithms. So, these methods will allow you to give a starting model for the structure. These are again based on the knowledge which we have in the databases. So, making use of the knowledge in the databases, we can build a possible starting model for the structure, run it through these uh, theoretical approaches to get to a situation where we are nearly correct in our structure. And then we can uh, calcul compare the calculated pattern with experimental pattern and do the read field refinement to solve the structure. Uh, this direct space approach is uh, undergoing a lot of uh, new changes. In fact, there are not many structures which have used this method and structures have been done, <coughs> but uh, it would be the most uh, preferred approach if uh, people are interested in pharmaceutical industry to determine the final structure, the complete structure of the compound with PXRD studies. So, the methodology, uh, the basic methodology is described here. Uh, first, we get a trial st crystal structure need to be generated in direct space. You can also use for example, um, uh, other experimental techniques like NMR for example. You can get a starting model from NMR, a starting guess model from NMR, put it into this procedure and then try to get to the structure. Uh, the cal so, one, once you have a trial structure, you calculate the powder pattern, compare with observed powder pattern. So, your R value and the RWP, RP and RWP will be the guidelines. We already know how and why because RP and RWP are now the signatures of the nature of your material. These are the fingerprints of uh, the nature of the material, where the atoms are sitting, how the structure is developed decides the shape of your profile. 
and also where the reflections appear. And therefore, the R and RWP give the guidelines and the aim is to identify the trial structure with lowest R value. This is known as R factor search. This is already practiced even in single crystal uh, structure determination in earlier days before direct methods and uh, Patterson methods took over particularly direct methods took over, people were experimenting with this. Again, the contribution of G. N. Ramachandran to this area has to be remembered. He did what is known as an R factor search using the vector search methodology. Using the Patterson function, he did what is known as an R factor search and identified the lowest R value which could give us the trial structure. And then did the routine structure refinement. This was with single crystal data. Any technique for global optimization may be used, uh, Monte Carlo simulated grid search and genetic algorithm. And cell dimensions and experimental, of course, accurate cell dimensions mm -hmm. and good experimental pattern are the prerequisites. Uh, so the structural formula has, has to be known and the molecular dimensions then are optimized uh, if they are known partly or fully. So this is the approach which generally allows the structure determination directly without making any assumptions. These are undergoing a lot of changes. There is a lot of structures which are being solved now, but not to the extent of the number of structures which come every day from single crystal diffraction, uh, which is obvious because the methods are yet to be tested and checked out. So, so much that uh, my friend uh, Lynn McEsker, who practices this uh, art of structure determination over the years, made this maze. Now, this is in fact a maze. The structure solution by powder diffraction is indeed a maze. So, you start from the, uh, you start from <coughs> the polycrystalline sample and you have to end up in crystal structure. So, this is like the maze. You have to find the way, the shortest, the proper path through which you have to traverse to reach to the crystal structure. So, what you do is first you collect the data using the radiation which could be laboratory x-rays, synchrotron x-rays and neutrons. All three can be used. And then we do the data collection. And <laughs> after the data collection, we need to do the indexing. So we get the cell dimensions and then uh, we find the space group. We guess the space group because in powder diffraction, uh, a unique determination of the space group is not possible. So, if it is a monoclinic system, we tried uh, and it, there is an indication of the space group identification. We can identify the uh, all possible space group, try the structure in all the space groups. So, it is a little tedious. The approach is a bit too tedious. And then the intensity extraction. So, the intensity extraction, uh, Lebel and Pauli methods are available. <coughs> One of the major problems here is from the polycrystalline to go to indexing and space group is a real ordeal. When once you get over it, you can intensity extract them with Lebel and Pauli methods. And then you have to treat the overlaps. There are various ways in which mathematical ways which are available to treat the overlapping peaks. And uh, this can be done by collecting multiple data sets, for example, at different wavelengths maybe, and then see whether we can differentiate between the overlapping peaks. And then we uh, use the method of uh, structure determination, so model based methods, uh, reciprocal lattice methods which we discussed, the Patterson and the direct methods. And then the direct space methods, the use of uh, Monte Carlo simulation, uh, simulator aniline and so on and genetic algorithm. So using any of these, we now solve the structure. Having solved the structure, we have to now do a whole profile refinement. The whole profile has to be refined. This is very, very important. So it is not just refine anything. I, I hope this is visible, the whole profile. Is it visible? <laughs> because the background is uh, very similar to the color I have used here. So the whole profile uh, is a must. So whatever we do, we have to consider the entire diffraction pattern. So as we said, 3 degrees to 100 degrees in 2 theta, all that whole thing has to be considered. And then we, of course, uh, from there go to the chemical information which we have. This is a must. We should know what are the com, what are the contents of the com material in which it is made of, number of phases, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Then we go and complete the structure. So this this is the first part of it. So we have the trial. So you know it's the same logic. Any structure determination is done in two steps. First, we do all these things and get a trial structure. The trial structure now uses the data, the extent of 
enormous amount of data, the overdetermined data that is available, and then refines the positions, the thermal parameters, etc. It is the same thing we do here, but we do it with uh, read field refinement. That means we do both the profile as well as the uh, structural data, and then we go to the crystal structure. So the, the, this is the overall uh, powder diffraction technique to start from the data up down here, somewhere here, and go to the structural determination there. So what is required for this entire operation is a polycrystalline sample. So if uh, you see that if it is a single crystal data, this maze is now, effort is very much reduced. So we do not have a maze. We can have a direct path to determine the crystal structure, whereas in powder diffraction, you have to go through this maze of uh, uh, various steps before you come to the actual crystal structure. Now, the uh, next issue which we consider is uh, an issue which normally comes up in pharma industry. I will take two examples where, which were uh, sorted out in our laboratory uh, using powder diffraction and profile refinements. So uh, a question came from a company, so I'm going to use technical numbers now. Companies don't allow us to use the name of the compound uh, because these are all uh, uh, come under the what we call as the CDA agreement. The pharma people who are participating in this course, they will realize what I'm talking about. So uh, this is the technical report on issues related to a compound which was made by a company and they called it BIPL00525. So we don't know what the compound is. Even today I don't know what the compound is. But it is, I know now of course because it is marketed now. So the uh, known structure which is reported in literature for which there was a patent which was taken by a company uh, is called GSP PYMT1704 technical. Now by technical it means that they have the pure compound which they obtained from the company. So the idea is to see whether this is different from that to start with. So what is normally done, you just record the powder pattern and put one powder pattern on top of the other. This is what most of the pharma people will do and when they did that we, they found that there is something like extra peak here uh, and some peaks here are looking different to them. And then there is additional peak here which probably is due to lack of crystallinity. Uh, this is not really showing that. So when you record the two powder patterns, uh, you can't immediately conclude that whether it is a polymorph of a drug molecule or not. Uh, you see that there is a lot of resemblance also between the two patterns. So the question came up whether it is a real polymorph. So these are some of the problems which come, uh, which can only be solved by uh, the knowledge which you have in symmetry, the knowledge which you have in diffraction, and the knowledge which you have in structure determination. Otherwise, these problems can never be sorted out. Okay, so this is something which is very important. And that is why the, the course which you have studied in understanding symmetry and structure gains enormous importance in your future career. So uh, what was done? The indexing was done. Uh, we used a package called FullProf. Uh, I told you GSAS in the previous case and FullProf and YANA, so many I said. Uh, but we are using FullProf and YANA in this protocol. We can use whatever program we would like to use. But uh, we use FullProf and use this program DICWAL, which I already mentioned, to determine the unit cell dimensions. It so happens that uh, the cell parameters of the company compound uh, are 8.1, 23.8, C is 10.8, beta is 99.7, and the volume is 2077. And the figure of merit which tells you how well these cell parameters have been fitted using the profile refinement. So what we did was to do a profile refinement. Got the cell dimensions the usual way, indexing, solving for the cell dimensions, and then we calculated this so-called figure of merit, which is essentially telling you how reliable this value is. It should be a reasonably high value. Uh, it is 19.8. The larger the value, the better is the fit. So let's not discuss this FOM because I have not talked to you about how this is coming about. But what is very important is this fact, which is highlighted here. All the peaks have to be in, in, uh, indexed. So when you, when you do a profile refinement, it is also your job to make sure that all the peaks which appear are all indexed. 
that means we have the HKL associated with every peak. There is no unindexed peak in the list with which you have determined the unit cell dimensions. And this is a must. <coughs> when that is a must, we know now that this is very uniquely determined unit cells uh, for the system. Then uh, the other compound was also taken up using the same package, the same machine, the same characteristics associated with the machine, same conditions. We find that the cell parameters are these and the volume is 2441. Now, uh, the two volumes are different and of course the cell dimensions are different, the beta is different. So, do you conclude that it is a polymorph? Well, we do not know because uh, the indexing of course uh, has been done uniquely. So, that says that these two are single phase compounds. Anyway, the marketed compound has to be single phase otherwise it will not be patented and patents will not be permitted. So, the first uh, excitement of this is to say that it is a new polymorph. But we cannot just say new polymorph and wind up the whole thing. So, what we have to do is to do the profile fitting. We do not need to do the structural determination. We do only the profile uh, refinement and the profile refinement gave the following values. RP is 10.08 and RWP is 15.36 and there is a, a measurement of the accuracy with which it is uh, fitted and that is 22.69. Uh, these two values 10 and 15 are very reliable given the nature of the, part, the powder pattern we have. Normally in a very good powder diffract pattern particularly the one we discussed previously which was inorganic in nature, we would not have that kind of quality powder diffraction coming in this case. And therefore, what we see here is uh, the two R factors which are reasonably reliable. So, we say that this cell dimension has been reliably uh, determined. So, also the next one we have to do the experiment on that as well and do the profile fitting using the same conditions, same evaluation parameters. We find there it is a slightly better fit, it is more crystalline as you saw. Here this material is more crystalline than this material which these people have made in the company. Uh, that depends upon the method of preparation, the conditions in which they made and so on. Obviously, they were claiming that the methods were different and therefore, it has to be a new polymorph that was their conclusion. But the conclusion cannot be unless it is absolutely verifiable, it cannot be concluded that uh, these two are the uh, different uh, compounds and therefore, polymorphs of the same material API. So, uh, the uh, profile fit uh, results are shown here. The, this is the company compound and this is the uh, profile fit for the, uh, the available compound which is marketed. And uh, these, this is, these two are of course, the APIs, active pharmaceutical ingredients. They are not the materials in tablet form. And so, the profile fit clearly shows that these two fits are very, very accurate. And in addition, at that moment, we came across a US patent which provided despacing of two other modifications of the drug. And uh, we found that uh, one of them is this, the already uh, patented material, the other one already uh, marketed material and the other one, the second form uh, which is the drug is also different from that of. BIPL. So, we, we also did the whole operation again on the second one. Even though the second one, the pure API was not available, so we could not do a, a thorough analysis like what we did in this case. We find that the pattern is different and the profile fit which we could do with whatever was available was not, a, not agreeing with the company sample. So, we concluded that the company sample therefore is a new polymorph. I am told that the company has got this happened last year. So, I am told that the company has gone ahead and filed the patent. I do not know what the results are, uh, but this is something which we did for the, that particular company. Then there is another case. Uh, there was the pure API which was made by a company. There were tablets made by the company and there were also tablets from two other companies who are actually manufacturing and selling that product. So, the company which we are, which approached us wanted to know whether they have a new polymorph. So, this was a little more challenging task because two companies have made these compounds. 
and those two companies the powder diffraction pattern is shown here. If you look closely of course it is overlap it <laughs> you may say that they are one and the same. Uh, so, what was shown here in fact below is a more clear cut uh, description of how these peaks are developing. Uh, maybe the crystalline quality of one is slightly better than that of the other, but these two are one and the same. And this in fact is uh, the polymorph among several other polymorphs already reported. So, for this particular compound there are five polymorphs or four polymorphs. So, the company thought that they have made a polymorph which is different from these two fellows. These two fellows have made a polymorph which is characterized as polymorph 2. So, the company which came with the data wanted to know whether this uh, particular polymorph is their particular compound is different from these two. Obviously, from the comparison here and also if one does the profile fit we see that these two compounds are one and the same and they belong to the so called polymorph 2. So, what was done was the data of all the polymorphs are listed here. So, you can see that the in the patent it is a Indian patent there are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 polymorphs I have listed them slightly differently just for comparison sake. You see the polymorph 1 here, polymorph 2 here, uh, 3 here, polymorph 4 there and polymorph 2 here. This is the reported in the patent and these are the so called uh, uh, the 2 theta values uh, for the wavelength which is common in all of them they have given the 2 theta values. You see for uh, polymorph 1 it is 5.389 and so on. Polymorph 3 is different it is 5.6, uh, 12, 14 and so on. Polymorph 4 is 4.9691. So, they are different uh, from the point of view of comparing the individual peaks. And polymorph 2 is 5.5, 6.8, 10.6 etc. Now, if you look at the, the pure form of the this name of the compound is this. Uh, ticaglirol and this particular compound uh, was given to us by the company and this is the uh, values of 2 theta. You see that the Axer and Berlenta also have the same or nearly the same uh, values of 2 theta. We did a profile fit, but we knew beforehand that they do not have a new polymorph. They have a polymorph 2, all three companies have the same polymorph 2. Uh, this disappointed the company, but this is this shows the power of analyzing the uh, structures by powder diffraction, particularly in identification of the polymorph. So, uh, the word of caution is that we should not take two samples overlap with each other and say we have the we have that uh, new compound or a new polymorph. So, the conclusion should be done by doing a profile refinement if structure data is available to the refer heat field refinement. And of course, if you can go the single crystals no, no doubt that you can get the structure to the accuracy with which you can argue that that is a new polymer. So, um, what I have tried to do in powder diffraction therefore, in the last uh, maybe an hour or so is essentially to give you the basics of powder diffraction, the indexing procedure and uh, based on the indexing procedure we have gone ahead and talked about the uh, nature of the profile, the way in which you can do the profile fitting and then the, the, the decomposition of the pattern and followed by the profile refinement and also eventually the read field refinement if structure is known. We have also discussed where the sources for structures can come from, from the databases, from literature and also from the fact that uh, there are similarities between earlier observed structures and the new newly made structure. If you are aware that we have done only a doping or a replacement or a substitution on a given compound and if the cell dimensions are nearly the same, we know now that they are probably isomorphous in nature. So, we can use the same structure information. So, basically we need a starting model. Either we do single crystal structure or we do this, we need a starting model. So, when once we have the starting model, we can go and do the refinement. So, the refinement procedure that we use therefore, either in single crystals or in powder in principle also tells whether we have this right starting model or the wrong starting model. Suppose we have the correct starting model, then the refinement will proceed smoothly. We can keep on improving the parameters. So, your accuracies in positions and thermal parameters will improve. The structural details which you can get in terms of bond lengths, angles, etcetera will also improve. 
but that is not the situation uh, which which will exist if the starting model is wrong or for that matter if your assignments of atoms is wrong what you called as carbon is not carbon but it is nitrogen and things like that this can happen in organic systems you can probably replace the position of nitrogen with a carbon in your structure and r factor is looking very good so what you have to therefore do is you always have to do after the final structure is finalized a difference fourier map there are two advantages of doing the difference fourier map the first advantage is it will now check whether all the positions of the atoms we have determined with the thermal parameters are so accurate that you will not be left with any density which has not accounted for in the neighborhood of that atom so if there is a density which is left in the neighborhood of that atom the assignment you have given to that atom is probably wrong so if there is a mistake made between a carbon atom and a nitrogen atom it is very easily seen in the difference fourier map difference fourier map will also assist you in identifying the positions of the hydrogen atoms because hydrogen atoms now will start show up, showing up when once the structure is accurately determined there are situations where hydrogen atoms probably are not determined accurately even by this approach then there is stereochemical way of fixing the hydrogens which we discussed already along with the so called riding hydrogen refinement pro procedure so as the the heavier atoms change positions the hydrogens will ride with them so considering all this the atomic identification and the determination of positions and of the atoms and all that are now available and we always have the fourier analysis to verify the accuracy that is associated with the structure